I'm officially at the point in quarantine where I'm playing with red lipstick. But I'm also officially at the point in quarantine where my lips are as dry as the Sahara Desert because it decided to become the middle of winter in New Jersey all over again in April. So that does not bode well for the red lipstick part of quarantine. And it's probably all over my teeth. Is it all over my teeth? It's all over my teeth. Fantastic. Hi my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the Tiger King with a prison wife spin on it. So I want to highlight Joe Exotic's fourth husband, Dylan, who has recently done a lot of media, has been in the news, has been on Entertainment Tonight, and a whole bunch of media outlets because he wants to tell his story. So I want to give you my perspective of their relationship as somebody who's in his very similar shoes. So if you're interested in my perspective of the Tiger King and his relationship with his prison wife. Please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. We do not glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this one-shot deal. Do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button and click subscribe if you're new or if you haven't already, and also ring that bell to be notified every single time I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes we do lives here and there on the days in between. Yesterday I was on YouTube and I noticed all of these videos being suggested to me and they were interviews with Dylan Passage, Parsage, oh God, what's his name? Now I have my computer in front of me, so your girl's gotta look. Tiger King's husband, Dylan, okay. Dylan Passage. I was right. Okay. So I had to watch a few of them. I watched the series, of course. I was sucked in like everybody else. First of all, I don't know if you saw him. I'll post a picture of him right up there and some clips of this interview if I can without getting copyright claims. But I think Dylan is as cute as a little button. I think he is so sweet in all of his interviews. He seems like he has a heart of gold. He seems like a very sincere, genuine little boy. I don't want to say little boy. He's has to be in his 20s, mid 20s maybe. And I want to be his friend or maybe not his friend. I'm a little too old, but I want to be like his honorary big sister. I just think he is a cutie pie. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments below. In these interviews across the board, he said, and I think I watched two or three, but he said that his relationship did not start out in any way other than companionship. It was not romantic. They were friends. Joe and Dylan met at a very low point in Dylan's life. He said he was addicted to Xanax. He said that he didn't really say the words, but to me, it sounded like he had been contemplating taking his own life because he said if he had not met Joe, he probably wouldn't be here anymore. And then eventually there grew a love there. So it went from friendship and companionship more into love and a romantic relationship. So part of me wonders if there, that love grew because of that savior complex. I know there was like a real medical term for it, but I don't remember. If it grew because he kind of saved him and he saved his life. And I can't tell you how many prison wives that I've spoken to or girlfriends or fiancés or anything along those lines, but significant others that I've spoken to that have felt the exact same way and have said those exact same words. He saved me. We're together because he saved me. And I kind of see that here. So I'm curious, and I think even somebody asked, like, if they didn't meet at that point in his life, would they have been together? And I don't know if the answer is yes, but I also think that possibly that's part of the reason why Dylan is holding on to this relationship so strong, even though Joe is facing all of this time, all of these years away from him. I think that maybe it's partly that. Also, the whole thing is very new. Joe was arrested, I just Googled it, on January 22nd, 2020. Joe was sentenced on January 22nd, 2020. So it's not even four months old. So at this point, everybody that I've ever spoken to, that I've ever coached, that is this early on into their relationship, if they knew them before, they're gung-ho, they're gonna stay the whole time, they could stick it out. And in their minds, they genuinely think that they can but he hasn't been through birthdays and holidays and celebrations and appeals being denied and all of that stuff. So that's subject to change throughout the course of the next few months, the next few years. I don't know how the publicity will affect their relationship, but as far as it stands now and he's all gung-ho, I'm gonna stay with him, it could just be a matter of it being so fresh and so new. He also says that he's not dating anybody right now, but 
if in the future he met somebody that swept him off his feet or distracted him or anything like that, he would be honest with Joe and he would move on. He said, Joe said he would support him all the way full on. So first of all, let me address that as if it were true. And I'm not saying it's true or not. Let's just see both sides of it. Let's address that as if it were true. That makes Joe or the person on the inside who says that to their loved one on the outside a good person, I think. You're not trying to drag them through this with you. They're not trying to control you and string you along and make you wait, especially when the person on the outside that's waiting for 22 or more years is as young as Dylan. Can you ask somebody to wait all of that time at that age? I don't know. I don't think that it's necessarily the right thing to do. And I think that it's a perfect response if it's true. It shows that Joe really loves him. You know that saying, so cheesy to add this, but you know that saying, if you love something, set it free, and if it's meant to be, it'll come back to you, or it'll come back to you if it's meant to be. I'm such a poet, clearly. But I genuinely believe that a good person would do that. And then it would be up to Dylan, or it's up to me to make the decision on if I wanna stay or if I wanna leave. And I always say, I reevaluate that as often as I need to. I readdress that. I soul search very frequently. I'm also 20 years, I believe, 20 years older than Dylan. So I'm in a very different position from him. I got back together with Adam when I was much older than Dylan is at this point. So that's why I feel differently. However, I think it's great that Joe says that he would support him now. Knowing Joe's character and how he's very insecure and he has this over-the-top personality and everything is for show, it's possible maybe even probable that Joe is saying that to get the reaction that he wants. He could possibly be saying that to get Dylan to say, no, you're the only one. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. I couldn't live my life without you. This, that, and the other thing. So he could be looking for reverse psychology type of reaction where he's saying, no, if you need to leave, you need to leave. I love you enough to let you go. But the only reason he's doing that is to get the response he's looking for, which is I will never leave you. In one of the interviews, Dylan said that he can't get visits. He couldn't get visits the whole time that Joe was in county. Makes sense. And then he moved to a different facility where they have him on quarantine because he was in transit. So he doesn't believe he was exposed to the virus. He does not have any symptoms of the virus, but because he was transferred and on the road, when you're on the road, despite what they're telling the public about safety and security and keeping them safe and germs and social distancing and blah, 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 you are sardined into a bus all on top of each other. There is no such thing as social distancing inside and there's absolutely no such thing as social distancing when you're in transit, unless they just moved him by himself, but you're still around drivers and maybe at rest stops to use the bathroom, depending on how long this trip was. I believe it was Oklahoma to Texas, but I'm, which I know isn't that far, but it's far enough that you might have to stop and use the restrooms or the cops might have to. Then they're exposed and they're touching things and then they're touching him. You guys get what I'm saying. But he said, and this broke my heart, he said where Joe goes now, he will be able to have conjugal visits. Oh, sweetie. I don't know who told you that. I don't know if Joe told you that to keep you, but this is a federal case, okay? There is absolutely no federal facility that is allowed to have conjugal visits. I know because I've been dealing with that system for a very long time. It's just not true. And if I'm incorrect, where I just read an article that said he's in federal prison, but if I'm incorrect and he's in state prison, Texas state does not have conjugals either. I know for a fact, because I have friends who are married, whose loved ones are serving time in Texas DOC, and no. No, but I'm almost certain this, you know what, let's just Google it. Yeah, it says right here on Google, not that Google is always 100% right, but it says that he sentenced to 22 years in federal prison. So, mm -mm. sorry, babe. <laughs> I wanna just hug him and be like, I'm sorry, I don't know who's telling you that. But if it's Joe, you gotta leave him. But there, no. And I'm sure the final question that's coming from you guys, because I had the same question, is about gay men inside of prison. Of course there's gay men inside of prison. There's of course there are gay people inside of prison. There's transgender people. Any kind of way that somebody sexually identifies out in the free world, there are those people inside of prison. I did have a very good friend who was a gay man who was dating a man inside of a facility in the deep south, which of course there were some issues because unfortunately there's a lot of homophobia 
in the South, in that part of the country. There is everywhere, but especially in that part of the country. So the way that my friend, let's give him a name. We'll call him Chris. The way that Chris had to do this was he had to make believe that his husband was his cousin when he would go visit him because he would get harassed. And even so, like my friend Chris was just very flamboyant. He was one of those people that you wanted to be your GBF, your gay best friend, because he was just so much fun. He was so over the top. He carried a purse, he did his nails. I love, love, loved him. We've lost touch since because him and his husband did wind up breaking up. Long story short, his husband was straight and using him, but that's a story for another time. But anyway, he carried a purse. So the hell that they gave him while he was waiting in line to go see his husband out down there at this facility, it was a state facility, you had to line up outside in order to get processed. So you would show up at the facility in the morning, he had to have his belongings with him, put them in a locker when he got there, and they ripped him to shreds for carrying a purse. And he was out being gay, but his husband was not out for being gay at that point. Now we know it's because he wasn't, but even so they had to, for their own protection, act like they were not a couple. I don't think that Joe and Dylan should have much of a problem at least as far as visit because they're such a high profile couple that I think that it would cause too much problems. Like they would absolutely, I believe, protect them even if that means putting Joe in solitary confinement for months or years at a time to protect him. That's what happens when you're pro high profile sometimes. But as far as him being an open gay man inside of prison, it's common. It happens. It's not really that big of a deal. Are they subjected to being beat up and all that kind of stuff? Sure. I mean, yes, it happens. It's inside. But generally, they are left alone and they just do their own thing as long as they don't mess with the wrong people, like trying to hit on somebody that's blatantly not gay. Obviously, they know what line to walk. We all have seen it out here. It's just going to be intensified in there because there's a lot of testosterone and there's a lot of ego and that's all you really have in there. You don't have possessions and you don't have money and you don't have good jobs. So all they have is their masculinity, some of them, and their ego and their reputation and all that stuff. Now I can tell you a story from my own perspective that I did see, and this is the one thing that I don't like. Do you all day long, however you identify, whatever you want to do, however you want to dress, behave, be, God bless you, you have my blessing, but you need to be honest with the person that you're in a relationship with. And this is what I mean. I used to go visit Adam when he was at the high security facility. There was a man there who was extremely masculine in the visit room and his wife of many years and his children would come see him. He was a military guy and like rough and tumble. I would always want to know about the different people in the visit room and we would run out of things to talk about. And he was like, don't even ask me about that guy. He is in a full blown out of the closet relationship with another guy or multiple guys in here. And then he comes out here and he treats his wife and his children like that and it's just disgusting to me. And I understand if you want to be in a relationship with somebody else, be honest with your wife because you're gonna be like that in there, you know, gay for this day, everybody knows. But I just think from our perspective as people on the outside, it just sucks to see that and to hear those stories because you, your heart breaks for that woman or the man like the Dylan in this situation if they're being lied to because we know what it feels like to put your life on hold and to wait all those years for somebody to come out to you and they might come out to you and that might be okay with you. My point is honesty. That's all I wanna say is be honest about it and then you have my blessing. Okay, I guess that's it, but I just love, love, love Dylan. I think he is absolutely adorable and maybe a little bit too sweet for Joe even, although everybody deserves love and I'm hoping Joe just hammed it up for the cameras, but I would love to coach Dylan. I would love to big sister him as somebody who has been through this, as somebody who's going through it, as somebody who understands what he's going through, who could help him decipher everything that's going on and hopefully make it through his relationship if he decides to stay and tell him about the red flags too and the green flags and all of that stuff. So you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you watch the show? I watched it like kind of like train wreck TV. I watched one episode and it's so foreign to me. 
I did live in North Carolina for five years when I went to school, so I am a little bit familiar with the South, but I am a tri-state, Long Island to New Jersey girl. So things in the deep, deep, deep South are just so foreign to me that it's halfway intriguing and halfway I'm like, what's happening? What am I watching? So it was just one of those train wrecks where I was watching, everybody says this, but I was watching it like I was watching a movie about aliens from Mars. Like it was just so beyond my scope of normal day-to-day -day life that I could not look away. And yes, I think Carol Baskins did it. That's my opinion. I think that the woman is crazy. If you want me to talk about my opinion on her, let me know. It's not about what my channel is about, but we could always go that way because it is about crime, right? I don't know. I think she killed her husband and fed him to the lions. That's my opinion. Not fact, but it's my opinion. And honestly, I don't like her and I hope that she gets what's coming to her because I think that she is very manipulative and I think that she is deceitful and I think she's a little kooky, but that's my opinion. Again, that's my opinion. People probably think I'm kooky. I am kooky though, I'll admit it. Okay, I'm babbling. I'm babbling because I'm avoiding going to the grocery store because mm, Corona. You know, but it's that time. So I will let you guys go. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>